This week on the C. McGee Show, we had professional boxer Podrick the Hammer McCrory. Now, Poddy is a personal friend of mine from the gym, and it was really great to have him on to talk about his career so far. And when I asked him about his aspirations in boxing, his answer wasn't really what I expected. So jump in, give it a listen, drop us a comment, and let us know what you think. Pow! A fucking flex. <laughs> Poddy, thank you very much for coming on and joining me today. No worries, mate. Yeah, all good. Great to have you here. So I just want to sort of start with this this question because I think it's very very important to every sort of subsequent question I want to ask you throughout, and it's talking a bit about your early experiences. So, you know, growing up in Belfast, um, as a as a young young man, so how do you how do you feel that your experiences here have sort of affected you and and sort of shaped the man that you are today? Yeah, so I, I grew up in like the middle of Falls Road, St. James's, um, which is known to be like like the close like a small community but we're all close. It was a place where like like you could have like left your house and left the front door open. Um and like like neighbors just came and went. Uh so it was an area like 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 I'll always be very proud of growing up in. Um and growing up like I I grew up in a family of four um, with a single parent most of the time. So, uh, like they are to say, St. James is it's, it's a, a small community um, and like they were all there like, to help each other. So, growing up with two brothers and a sister, uh, I like, like my, my upbringing, um, it, like it definitely shaped me now like like, like it's kind of like driven me like like to be be a good parent to like my own kids to yeah. to be like to have or like i've worked from like i was 16 as well like so it like it's really driven me to to um to to be be a, like a, a better person as well yeah and no no i like Belfast, like when I grew up, was was like kind of like slowly coming out of like 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 the, the uh, troubles. Yeah. Um, I lived in like like a small interface mm -hmm. where like, like there was always trouble. Um, but now like sadly, yeah, that's very good to see. Um, yeah. no, but growing Belfast, I love Belfast. Um. I I hate seeing people run Belfast down. Yeah, um, it's people I love. So yeah, uh, and, and you've got such a good local support here as well. Like you from from the very first time that you fought as a professional, um, you know, the, there's the the song, but oh, Paddy McCrory. So where did that where did that come from? Was that from your amateur career, or was that from your your local no, fans of Belfast? Yeah, no, that song when it came out, like my first fight, I fought in the Odyssey. Um and like my first ever fight and I sold two hundred and fifty tickets, which I was yeah. very surprised at. Yeah. Uh I like really surprised at. So like I was coming out and I I came out to like a, like a random song and like I was walking out and all my fans like were singing, Oh Paulie McCrory. And I was like, that's class. So ever from it, like yeah. I I came out there. Seven Nieces Army, which yeah. is the beat of du, 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 du. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 250 tickets, 250 people. So, like, I like, I was like second fight, so there was only about 300 people in the whole place, mm -hmm. and, two, and 250 like were there, like, to support me. Uh, no, it was great, amazing. And how does it feel? How does it feel when you're walking out and you can hear that chant? Because, like, when I hear it and I see the local, like, I, I love huge boxing fan but when when you watch the local fights especially even watching the the fella on tv it was absolutely incredible like the atmosphere just looked electric so how did it feel walking out in front of everybody hearing everybody chant that well the first time it was like it was like a strange feeling it was like i was walking out on a sky sports show people singing my name like in the odyssey like it's a stadium that i went like watched so many events yeah and i was like was like a wee bit like blown away, nervous. Like I was walking out, and I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, 
but I've now had 12 fights in many different venues and I've kind of like grown to love it and like now I'm asked like seeing a card like would you rather be on early when there's no crowd or on later when there's a crowd like I would love to be like bang centre in the middle where the place is full packed like I like I love it yeah like I feel like I, like like I thrive off off the, off the crowd yeah the energy off the crowd and what, what like what what does it mean to start boxing in the the first place like was there was there a significant mo- moment where you just went you know maybe you were taking the boxing club what, what was it happened and you just sort of fell in love with the sport yeah so um we done a wee tiny bit back when I was maybe nine nine we probably boxed for about me and my older brother boxed for about a month or two and then we yeah. stopped so back in St James like I was saying it's like a small community everyone knew everybody so there was quite a few of them as they started boxing mm-hmm. uh, I was I was around late 14 and uh, they were all going for like four, five, six months. And I was like, you know what? I would love to get back into it. So there was a local guy and uh, he had like a small, a small minibus. Yeah. He came and picked me up. So I was so like, like it was one day I was like, come on. So I jumped the bus and then, and then we went to the boxing club. And from then, like, like I've always been involved in it at the age of four, like late 14. Yeah. Yeah. And you you took a massive break as well in the sort of middle of your amateur career, didn't you? Was, yeah. So what what happened there? Did you you know like um, was there a particular reason you took a break? No, there was no like, there was no real reason. Like I, I I can't think back and say that's why. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like late teens. Like I was a wee bit like lazy. Like like had no real drive. Um, yeah. And that's probably like part of the reason but I get beat in, in, in an Irish final um, and I kind of just went you know what like I'm done and then I stopped for nearly nearly four years four mm-hmm. years um, at the age of 21 and then 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 I was always like I'm going to make a comeback I'm going to make a comeback I'm, like, I, like I want to do it again maybe train for a week and stop and um yeah, there was no real reason. No, that's it. Yeah. And what, 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 was there something that happened to me to just start again? Or did you just want to come back so, in and just give it another go? Strangely, I, again, like, there was never there was never that one thing where I was like, I'm going back to it. Because, see, in the four years, like, like I made a train for a, a month and stopped, a week and stopped. So, like, I was never fully out of it, but I, I didn't fight. I didn't compete. Yeah. But, like, it was, like, small wee bricks, like, or small wee like like week or months sort of like training again um, yeah. and then it was like a new year's day or new year's or like the second of january or something like that i was sitting in, in my house and um i was reading the paper and there was like a small article it was like also release or the end of seniors uh to take part on it in like the 28th or 29th of january mm-hmm. it was so it was it was I think it was like three and a half to four weeks from then. So I was sitting with a, a freaking beer and I was like, you know what? I would really love to give this a go because it was it was the year it was qualification for the Commonwealth Games. Yes. And I was like, like I like I was like, I really want to try this. So the next day I thought of a, a few clubs and to be honest, back in like, like back then I was around loads of clubs. Yeah. So I was thinking, what club like like there's a, there has to be a club that I can go to. Where they won't be like, you know, I'll part of your full shit out because you've been here and you've went again. Um, so I went to Glenn, where Paul Hayden Senior like was the coach, and we spoke, mm-hmm. and I was like, Paul, I want to fight again. And uh, he was like, when? And I was like, in the other seniors. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it was like, it's in three and a half weeks. Or Paul's been training for seven weeks for this. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. I know. I, so he was like, right, jump the scales, and we'll see what the crack is. Jump the scales, it was like 80 odd kilo, 87 kilo or something. He was like, you only have a few weeks to lose some kilo. And I was like, right, we'll do it. And he was like, oh, he was like, right, come to every session, do what I say, and we'll like think about it. So three and a half weeks, things went well, and then I fought on the seniors. 
Jesus. And here, did, did I, I think I had a look the other day at that. What, what year was that? That was 14, 2014. 2014. Did you fight yeah, Paul, no. Paul O'Neill that year from St. Paul's? Or was that a couple the, of years later? No, no, I no, I, I fought him in, in the quarterfinal. Yeah. In, the, in that year. I remember yeah. because I, like, I used to be part of St. Paul's now. I was in Australia at the time, but I remember seeing the pictures being put up. And I, yeah, re- no, I, re- I remember the remember Sparn Paul. Jesus, that boy had some some punch on him, like when he yeah, when he called you. Yeah, yeah, you punch, you punch, right? Yeah. Um. So you you won that, and you with three and a half weeks to go, like, or it was just a couple two and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks training. Three, yeah. three and a half weeks training, and you won it, and then you thought, like, is, at that point were you thinking, like, I'm naturally talented at this, I could make a real go at it, just keep no. keep pushing. No, no, I. I would be like it's like my worst trait is probably that I'm slightly pessimistic. So I'm always like I was always like I got lucky. Um, so then, but so like it, this is something like like I still like like I bottle with. Like I'm always like thinking that I got lucky or this shouldn't happen to me or whatever. Um, but then then I was like I went to a couple of training camps. I went. The friends to fight, um, and then I had to fight, fight the same guy again that I fought in the Ulster final. Mm-hmm. He then won. He went to Commonwealth Games. So then I was at a crossroads. I was like, do I keep boxing? I was like 20, 27 at the time. Yeah. I was like, do I keep boxing? Um, or do I stop? Because then I like I thought it was like slightly corrupt. Um, yeah. Just and and then I was like, is it worth all the effort? Because at that age, I was like, again, I was at a crossroads where what I do in my life, like, or like, do I try and like take boxing as a career or whatever? Mm-hmm. So, so I then seen an English manager starting to send a, a couple of fighters from here, like Jared Healy, Joe Hillary, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I reached out to him. So then we like, spoke, he flew over. And then this was then approaching my twenty eighth birthday, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we spoke, and then I sang pro. Yeah. yeah. I I think a lot of people sort of get get to that stage with with amateur their amateur career. You know, the, the, it's either corruption or they lose the heart or whatever, and then it's time to turn pro. It's it's surprising to me why such a why. It, it's such a negative experience about the, the end of an amateur career is the kickstart to the month to turn pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like I say, I, 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 so I won the Ulster Elites, which was then a qualification, like for the Commonwealth Games. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was more probably because I was already in like for so long, they kind of they made me fight the same guy again. Like, so there's like t- ten weights. 10 or 11 weights and there was no one else that had to do that um, yeah every other champion went to come all games yeah uh, so yeah it left a real like a real like sorry yeah. Yeah, yeah um and then i was i was like i was like i think i had i think i had a couple more fights but but like that that was the thing that was like was like the big thing like for me to go like i'm going to try for yeah I actually want to go back to something you said earlier on. You know, you said whenever something something like that happens, you got lucky, you're very pessimistic, you know. Yeah. Every everything, everything it seems to me that you say is not surrounding your talent, but that you got lucky. Why why do you think like that? I don't know. I, again, again, it's probably like something like a, like from my past. Um something that I never really like speak about or 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 look back on. I I like I'm kind of like like the person is the past is the past and we can't change that. So mm-hmm. can move forward. Yeah. Um. I I, but I don't know why I'm so pessimistic. Like it's something like me and my wife always like, like she's like, why are you so pessimistic? Like, say she says let's do this and I'd be like, I know, but what if? And she's like. Like, like why do you do that I, I, I really like I don't know I, I don't know the reason but it's something like like I work on like every day I like I sit and I 
I started working with a guy, Liam Reilly, who is a, a, a clinical psychiatrist only for boxing. Mm-hmm. So only for boxing, just to, just to, like to try and take away that sort of like, like, like the negative thoughts that always creep into my mind. Um, yeah. So it's like, it's worked brilliant. Like we've sat down, like the visualization has worked really well. Um, yeah. But there's nothing, again, like there's nothing that I can go, this is why I'm like this. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. No, it's just, just interesting. Uh, just was, was curious more than anything. Yeah. But let's talk about your, your pro career and, Obviously, mentality is a huge thing in, in boxing. Like, it's probably the biggest. The, the mental game is the hardest thing. So, I was, you know, you go through times where, you know, there's highs and there's lows and fighters pull out and, and that sort of stuff. So, how do you deal with those challenges that you're going to come across mentally? Yeah, so, uh, like, so like, at the start of my career, it started massive. Like, as I say, I, like I fought in the SSC on a Sky Sports card. Um, and then after that, Again, massive news. I was announced on the card, Frampton Undercard. Like, yeah. Frampton is my, my favorite fighter of all time. Um, and it was great. Like, I was like, this is amazing. Like, like within six weeks, I'm going to be fighting like, in the Odyssey again, mm-hmm. which was a big goal of mine. Um, and then a day before the weigh-in, so like the whole camp went, a day before the weigh-in, um, the whole car was called off. Like, like everything was called off. Frampton's opponent slipped in the shower, which then yes. meant yes. everything was called off. And it was the first sort of like, it was like a mini crisis. I was like, I just trained for like a long time. Like, and, and then like, like, like then like, like the, weight, the, weight, the weight cut is tough for you as well. Yeah, the weight cut. And like people think like pro boxing is like, you got some glamour and it, like it really isn't. So then, like, it was like, it was like I trained for eight, eight or nine weeks or whatever it was, mm-hmm. and and there's and like there's no money coming in. So then you're kind of like, shit. And then the thoughts started going like, again, then is boxing really worth it? Mm-hmm. So, but then I spoke like with my team, like my manager, and and they were kind of like, right, we'll get you out again, we'll get you out again. So Kieran, then he got me out in Blackpool, mm-hmm. and. So big flights, a few, like about ten friends, big flights to go watch. Again, it was cancelled. So like the emotions, they were crazy. It's like yeah, oh, this is full shit. Boxing's crap. Um, but it's something like like I really wanted to give a go. Like I was uh, approaching, I was twenty nine, approaching thirty, and I was kind of like this is my last go. So I stuck with it. I trained hard, and and then things started to change. Yeah. Um, my second, so my second pro fight was was on was on I on a Guinea promotion. Who, mm-hmm. who then Mark Mark Guinley, Ray Ray Guinley, like was my coach. Um, and from there, I had a good win, and then I signed a management deal with MTK, who's um, and to be honest, like people always say, do you think you're too old, or do you think that you were too old then, like the same pro? And I I uh. I don't think so. I think I think the way it's worked, everything's felt perfect. Like the opportunities of the failure wouldn't have been about six, seven years ago. Yes. The opportunities of like fighting on undercards of Mick Collin or undercards of like Ram Burnett wouldn't have been about yeah. eight, nine years ago. So I, I, I think the way things have failed, like it's been perfect for me. Obviously, I would like to be a bit younger, but I wouldn't have got these opportunities now as it would have got then yeah and do, do you think you know the the high the car front then really opened those doors for a lot of irish fighters especially in belfast because i mean it really annoys me when people people say bad things about him and especially towards the end of his career what he done for the irish fighters especially to give everybody a platform to, to get themselves known on is, is incredible it, listen Card from reached the pinnacle of his sport, uh, and towards the end of his career, especially after like his last his last fight, Fi Hearn, like boxing fans can be so fickle. It's it's uh, it's crazy, yeah. It's very disappointing, but for me, like Frampton, oh, like like he's a massive inspiration, like, and 
like Eddie Hearn, who he was saying with at the start, Frank Warren, top rank, from brought them all here, and they seen what 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 the Irish fans can be like. Yeah. Um, and and he opened the doors for for a, like a lot of fighters. Yeah. Um, let's talk a wee bit now about you know drive and energy and and like. Because I, I know obviously when you're when you're in camp, I know you have a lot of other things going on at, on outside of boxing. But how do you keep? Is do you have any like rituals or anything that keeps your 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 mental game strong and your your drive and your energy high? Um. Well, I have a team, so like I like I have like my coaches now, like in Dave Walsh. Um. I have Sean Crow as my SNC coach, and I have Tony O'Neill as well. Tony's played a big part. Yeah. Yeah. He's he, he played a big part. Tony would be like, like, if I ever have a, a problem, like, I would phone Tony. Mm-hmm. It's, it's strange because, strange like, I only met him, like, recently. But I use him as, like, a sound wall and I would, like, or, and, like, like, ask for, like, thoughts. And he's a very knowledgeable man. Yeah. And he's really good in the base. But, yeah, like, in terms of, of energy, like, I have a good way of finding, 30 minutes for a nap <laughs> around <laughs> everything else. Yeah. Like, like it plays a massive part as well. Um, yeah. But for me, it's just about trying to like, make sure I get my sleep, make sure I'm up in time in the morning. Um, I And like I have tried stuff like writing down thoughts and stuff. It, it, it doesn't really work for me. Yeah. Um, so really like I just get up, really just get up and do what I have to do. Like, I have work mm-hmm. most mornings at, like, at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. I then have to do my own training, like, like, in between. I then have to try and find time, like, for my wife, who is probably, unfortunately, she, she like, we put from here to here. Yeah. So it's like, I have to go to work. I have to train because yeah. like, it's my job. I then have to be a father. Yeah. And my wife gets, like gets whatever's left. And yeah. Do you yeah. Know what? She she's been like a massive part of of me. Like 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 we're together fifteen years. Amazing. Two days ago, was it? Yeah. Um and she's seen me at my lowest. And and uh and, and like she's always stuck by me. Like like she, she's an amazing woman. She's super smart. Like my wife has a brilliant career of her own. She's um a biomedical scientist. She's so, right up, yeah. Yeah, so she she she's a very smart woman. Not smart enough because she's still stuck with me, but, <laughs> but um, no, I like I just get up and like I do what I have to do. I, I don't really have any like no rituals or nothing. I like I make sure I get my sleep, I stay hydrated, I train, which gives me loads of energy as well. Like mm-hmm. the days that I don't train, like I feel really flat. Mm-hmm. Um and then now I, so I fought for four weeks ago. So like my training volume like has dropped like it like has dropped loads. Yes. I then found that my energy levels have dropped loads as well. Yeah. So you feel you feel like you're you're energetic whenever you're you're training, you're like at the in the height of camp. In the gym, yeah. Eat, yeah. Eating the right food, eating the right food, like doing the right things. Like Big time. when I'm not in camp, like I might have a couple more beers or eat eat some more like fast foods or or bad foods um yeah. and they could definitely feel a difference in your energy yeah and you and your wife have been together 15 years so you guys yeah. are essentially childhood sweethearts yeah yeah they, uh, they, they really americanize the term yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we met when we were like 17 so yeah how do, like that, that's very rare that's that's amazing what's what's the secret um just tires is always right <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, Dave, don't you be listening to this <laughs> so man you, you do you've got a, a lot you've got a lot going on in your life um you know yeah. obviously professional boxer personal trainer husband a father like how the fuck do you manage your time like how do you how do you keep on top of it all that's that's one thing that i that i struggle with is time and mm-hmm. solely because like i was saying like Finding time for like like my wife at the bottom, like it's hard, like it's hard, and it, like it, it can be challenging as well. Um, it's 
it's something it's something that I could do better, mm-hmm. especially like in work. I find myself I find myself like in work. I I like I bend over backwards like like the to walk around like my clients and stuff. Yeah. Um, which which then does have an effect on my personal life. Yeah. And in terms of like time management. Yeah. Um. So I know it's something that I do need to work on. Um, yeah. But like, but as I say, for now, I, like I really just I get up in the morning. I make sure I do what I have to do. Mm-hmm. Um. I spend as much time as I can, like my wife and my kids. Like, like it might sound a bit cheesy, but my kids are my world. Like they're, they're yeah. Like, like I make sure that I always. Like I always have time for them. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. Um, yeah, look, ba- balancing time is always going to be the hardest thing for anybody. And just what you said there about bending over backwards for your clients, I've been in that position where your your personal life starts to suffer. Your your training and your health, and it, it's like it, it's one of those things that sometimes you don't even see it happening. It's like you 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 cross one boundary you know it's a small one and then it's a bigger one and then it's a bigger one and the next thing you do you notice that you know you don't have any time for yourself you don't have any time for your family um setting boundaries was was a huge thing for me just in, in my life with especially with business because you know at the end of the day you're gonna your, your money's gonna come and go your business is gonna come and go everything else but your family are gonna be there forever so you know, trying to spend time with them is, is probably the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, t- it, it's like, it, it, like it's, it's definitely something that I need to, like, to work on. Yeah. I, like, I always be like, like, my business, like, I always be like, my business works now, and I'm like, I know it needs changed, mm-hmm. but I don't want to, like, like, do much now at the minute because I have, like I have like my boxing career going on as well. Yeah. So, so I'm just making it work, like work. So, like yeah. Ring, like, you know what I mean? So, but eventually, like I will change that. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a just a, a strange one, um, a, a tough one for everybody. I think everybody sort of struggle has that same struggle. Um, uh, now you obviously recently come off. I, I can't even say this fellow's name. What about going to try it. Sergey Gorokov? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Gorokov, I uh, came off great win. I mean, I was sitting watching it, me and Neve, and I was like, for a few rounds, I was like, I hope he throws that right uppercut soon. And boom, there it was straight away, and busted his nose. Amazing, really, really good win. Um, how did you feel after that win? Yeah, like a great feeling. Like, like the buzz was was immense, and it was it was more because I knew I knew that that a lot of people. Like within my circle, like like my circle, like thought that this was going to be a real tough fight. Like I seen a few interview, a few interviews that they got there with Jimmy Collin, and he was like, he was like, we didn't like, we we did we didn't really expect that to be like that way. So the version, like obviously, so like, like the way it worked was eight weeks out from the failure. Jimmy was like, right, like we have a fight, but but. It's this version, and he sent me him through, and I was like, "Right, okay, well, let's fight him." And Jimmy was like, "But think about it, like go watch him and whatever." So I was like, "The failure, it's for a WBC title, like let's make the fight." So it was like, "Right, okay." So then I started to like look into it more, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then I realized that that was like, "Shit, this version can fight." Yeah, but the fight was made. And again, that's this is me being like a, a, a freaking pessimist. Yeah, I started yeah. to think, I started to think, oh my god, like if I made it, like the right decision. But, but, in the gym, I was like smashing it. I was like, training was going really well. Sparring was going well. My numbers in the gym were going like, like were like amazing. And then I started to grow in confidence, like during the camp, mm-hmm. and going in the fight, like I was like, I was like nervous, especially looking at the other fight, nervous, but more more excited than anything um and then and then uh and then i watched the interviews out there and i seen that like the russian management team so like the russian tv 
bought the rights to that fight. So yeah. like, they really fancied that fight. His management team paid for his old camp, so they sent him away. Yeah, for his old camp, expecting him to come here and just like walk through me and beat me up. Yeah, and it didn't happen. But but you actually dispatched it pretty pretty easily. Like you know, it, it, it seemed easy. It seemed easy, but it, let me. I mean, you, that's what it like, seemed like on, from from a watcher's point of view. In the ring, like I felt really comfortable. Yeah. The the, the only thing that it, like I was kind of worried of or slightly wary of was his power because he hit me once or twice and and like it was a thud. But yeah. in terms of like ability, I, I felt like I was like on a different planet to him. Yeah. Um, but it was a massive win for me. It's mm-hmm. put me in a really good place. Like from the end, I've had I've had like small whispers of of like potential. Like, like big things like so um it's put me in a really good place i know i'm 33 but that like the, like the four or five years out that i took from boxing is like less maze in the clock so i i i like i feel amazing like i i, I feel like i'm 21 for a sec yeah um and i know i look it as well thanks <laughs> <laughs> so um but yeah i'm in a really good place at the minute like like in terms of my my uh, boxing career. Yeah. Uh, so who would who do you want to fight now? I, I know we, I try to keep these questions sort of the the quite quite short, but I know everybody asks you these questions. But who do you want to fight next? Yeah, like there's like in the UK, like like the super middleweight scene is like mm-hmm. awesome. It's like it's, it's inc- like at the very top you have like William Saunders, Colin Smith. Smith, yeah. You have yeah, so yeah, like you have the Emmons, and then like the Brit, like so like the like the British scene yeah. is from, from from like five to twelve, everybody could beat everybody. Yeah. But the week before I fought, and this is simply like only because it's the week before I fought, there was a super military fight. It was Jack Hong. Yeah. Um Jack Hong beat a guy, a Turkish guy called Yaldrum. Yeah. Who, I was that fight. Who fought Carnalo in his last fight? So yeah. Yaldrum he fought Carnalo. He beat by Carnalo, which is like, obvious. Yeah, like, Carnalo is like, like the one. Like, like he's a late step in. He was a late step in, wasn't he? Yeah. So now Jack Hong beat Yalder. So he, he has the IBF International. I have. I, I have a WBC International. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's a good fight. I think. I, I think it's an, like an easy fight to make. He yeah. seems like a decent guy as well. Like, so yeah, I couldn't see there being much shorter like like <laughs> crap talk either. So. Um, no, I, I think that's a good fight for me at like at this stage, but yeah. I know Jamie Collin and MTK have plans for me as well, so we're looking towards November or the start of December. Um, yeah, and so yeah, I they have plans. That's a fight, that's a fight the guy would like. I know, I know he's saying with 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 matching boxing, so yeah, um, let's, let's, go to let's make it. That's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. But like, if it's not made, I still have plenty of options. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So I, I know you said about Jamie there. You know, you guys have a plan um for, for what you want to do with your career. But what 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 are your biggest goals and ambitions with your boxing career? Well, like you always hear this. Every boxer always say, "I want to be world champion," mm-hmm. and of course, I except for except for Toro McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> I want to entertain. Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody would love to be a freaking world champion. But yeah. really, like, really, like, for me, is my biggest goal in boxing is to come out the other side healthy and mortgage free. I would love to be mortgage free. Mm-hmm. Um, like, that, that's my biggest goal. Yeah. Obviously, if I, like, in terms of, like, like winning something, I would love to be a world champion. Yeah. But, but being a realist, I would love to be like I think I can achieve a European title. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, just the just like for for all the years that you put in the boxing through your amateur career, and you always see this with fighters who are sort of making it as a pro. They always say you know it's financial comfort, and then it's once they can provide for their family, you know, mortgage-free, it's a, it's a great goal, financial goal. Um, yeah. 
and then obviously pushing on for the titles. Uh, now, who who would be your favorite boxer at, at the present moment in time to watch? Currently, I think it's hard to look past Colonel Alvarez. Maybe only because he's like he's like the same weight as me. But yeah. around that, you still have like Manny Pacquiao, who who's probably at the end of his career. He's a, a freaking superstar. And then you have Terence Crawford, very very good. Yeah. Uh, and Tyson Fury. I think mm-hmm. Tyson's he's he's freaking gold, isn't he? Ah, oh, Jesus! For 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 everything, he's got the whole package: the personality, the boxing skills, the entertainment. And um, yeah. how do you think this fight's going to go with Deontay Wilder in October? I fancy Tyson Fury very strongly. Yeah. The only thing is Deontay Wilder. He like like he has that punch. Like no matter how good or bad he is, you can't deny that 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 he can punch seriously hard, and that and that's the that's the only way that he's going to be. At, be it Tyson Fury, but I can't say going any different than the second fight. Yeah, do you, do you think Deontay Wilder? I I don't know. Do you, you always see these things. You see the videos on Instagram. You see the posts and whatever else. You know. Do you think he's coming in with a different mentality this time, or do you do you think that's all for show? Because it's not going to bother yeah, Tyson no, Fury. Yeah, exactly. Like the only doubt, like in my mind, is like watching, like. I don't think Wailer and he like he looks like a different animal. He's getting trained by a new fighter. Mm-hmm. But you don't know how much of it's actually true. Like if you look back at like the comments that he made after the the second fight with with Tyson Fury, you're like, this guy's not mentally stable because he started blaming like at first he blamed his costume. Yeah. It was too heavy. And and then he and then he blamed everything blaming, but himself. Like, he, he blamed the gloves and then he blamed his his coach, who was his coach for a very long time, he said his coach sp- spiked his water. <laughs> um, he, he, so, like, you don't know what, like, what's true and what's not. But, but looking, he, like, he looks in a very good place. He, he, um, so, yeah, uh, he definitely has a puncher's chance. Yeah, I mean, you, you watch the guys and the people always show me videos, go, I look at Deontay Wilder in the pads. I'm like, you could literally mm-hmm. take a 30 second clip of me in the pads and I would look like a world champion and I'd yeah. probably, probably faint after. <laughs> but it's it's like the pads don't mean anything. You can be no. okay in the pads. It's, you know, for for the, for that fight in particular, the Deontay Wilder Fury too, you know, if he was beat by, if he was beat by a small margin, or it was a draw like the first fight, then you could maybe say, oh, it was these little things, you know, it could have been the costume weighing me down or it could have been something yeah. that happened in camp, but he took a severe beating for the, yeah. the whole the whole fight. Yeah. That was, it was definitely, you know, it's not that Deontay Wilder doesn't have the ability. It's just that I think his mentality for that fight was, this is going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. He, I don't um, think he took it seriously. Yeah, like, see to say, you can stand the pads and you punch them all day, but but the thing that, the thing with, with, with Dudley Wailer and how I think Fury is so much better than him is, is his feet work. Yeah. Is his feet. Dudley yeah. is, is on his feet. He's ridiculously he flat footed. Yeah. And he can punch and be flashy until he get until he has to move. Yeah. Which is actually surprising. I thought he, because he, he did win a bronze at the Olympics, isn't he, in 2008? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. his boxing, he can't box. Like there's no, no doubt about that. But oh, yeah. over the 12 round against someone like Fury, who is very good on his feet. It's, it's yeah. tough for him to, to follow him around. Um, yeah. Now, if you could spend, I always love this question because it's such, such a good answer. You get such a range of answers. Um, if you could spend one day in the gym with a former or current world champion, who would it be and why? In the gym? Yeah. Well, to, to pick their brain, to watch their training, yeah. the, whole, the whole shebang. I'll, I'll answer t- like twice. So okay. currently, Currently, maybe Fury, because yeah. like anything I see, like from his clips, it looks like it's it's super fun. The like and and it looks like they're always training hard. Um, and then going back like previously, um, I don't know. I, like I've always had this thing for Muhammad Ali. Um, yeah. again, like his charisma was amazing. Uh. His ability then was like, was like, like what he could do then, like was freaking out of the world. Like just to see what he was doing, like yeah, Ali and Fury. 
Okay, okay, interesting. Um, it's two two huge personalities, which would be yeah. you know probably you could probably teach you how to sell a fight within one day. You know, just listen yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, so well, we're going to finish you off just with some some like quick fire questions. So I don't know, did you have a chance to read them beforehand or? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. I I really struggle like with this sort of stuff, but that's cool. <laughs> okay, okay. So are you a morning or a night person? Morning. Morning. Okay. <laughs> What compliment do people give you the most? I don't really like speaking about myself, but like a lot say that I'm just a very good guy. Yeah, that's good. That's, good. that's always a good one. Yeah. Um, what is your hidden talent? I used to be good at chess. Did you? Yeah. Man, have you watched The Queen's Gambit? Yeah, Vernon. Yeah, very good. Um, what is your biggest addiction? At the minute, food. Food. <laughs> I po- <laughs> post fight, man. It's always my. Uh, I really struggle with my weight as well. Like, just it, it fluctuates up and down. But I love my food as well. It's and it's hard being like super busy as well. Like, like it becomes a bit harder. Yeah, definitely. Um, what is your favorite hobby outside of boxing? Of course. Yeah, I love Gaelic football. Yeah. And after boxing, I still think I'll try and like, pl- like play, and I also love soccer. Yeah. So you're just a very sporty person in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Now, finally, what have you done? What What have you done that you're most proud of? Again, it's probably a bit soppy. Um. But being a father, like, like two kids and marrying my childhood love. There's no, there's not, not definitely nothing soppy about that. That's. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing just being proud of you and your family there's nothing yeah of course um yeah. so what if people want to find out more about you Padraig McCrory you know because a lot of people that listen to this aren't from the boxing community um yeah. and from, from over in England where did they find out more about you and what you're about yeah so I have Instagram it's Paddy McCrory um and I also have Facebook and Twitter mm-hmm. um yeah so as I say most of the stuff like on there will be about my boxing career uh, and my family. And then I'm a personal trainer, so like you'll see bits and bobs with that. But yeah, that's it. Amazing. Well, look, Potty, I really want to thank you for, for coming on and answering. I know sometimes I get quite personal with questions, but I just... No, it's all good. I like... I like, I, I, like, I don't want to ask you the same... Everybody the same stuff. You know, I like to get a wee bit yeah. more behind the person. So look, I appreciate you coming on today and uh, thank you for your time. No worries, mate. Yeah, cheers.